Thank you and welcome to a very sad occasion. Like Liberace, I've tinkered with my last ivory, for tonight sees the final Games Master in the series. Over the last ten weeks, we've introduced television to the joys of video gaming, and we hope we've shown some people the neon delights of arcade ecstasy, while satisfying the cravings of the most rampant joystick tuggers. So, it is with a huge lump in my throat that I now sadly turn to the, for the last time to the microchip man who's won a place in all your hearts, the Games Master. Hello. If it flies, shoot it. That's the message for the first of this week's challenges on Duck Hunt. With your trusty hunting dog flushing out your prey, you have three shots to bag each pair of fleeing ducks. You will need to shoot eight out of ten ducks on the first level. If you're successful, you'll go on to the second level, where smaller and faster clay pigeons will replace ducks, and you'll need to hit nine out of ten for ultimate triumph. Go on, see if you can make my day, young man. And trying to blast some innocent wildfowl tonight is a young trigger-happy lad from Wirral, Paul Gammon. Now, Paul, Duck Hunt is a game that most people will have on the Nintendo, so this is your big chance to show everybody how to play it. How do you feel? Are you confident? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you'd like to take your pistol in your hand, get in position, and we'll get ready to start. Here again is Jazz Rigno from Mean Machine and CNVG. Jazz, Duck Hunt, what a game. Well, it's nearly as old as the Challenger, but it's fun, and that's what counts. <laughs> now, any initial hints you could give for this splendid game? Well, apart from moving the gun right next to the screen so you can't miss, uh, that's about it, I think. <laughs> OK. Well, I'm sure our challenger will bear that in mind. Are you ready, Paul? Then off you go. Yeah! Uh, he was lucky there. Three, three shots at two. Nice solid start, though. Two out of two. And he's got the first one. Oh, another two out of two. This boy is smoking now, Jazz. <laughs> you better watch out that confidence goes through his head. And... Six out of six. This boy is on fire here. Seven. Eight. Oh, and it's dead eye shooting. Safely through it. The final round that he's just going to knock off these other couple of ducks just, just to show his prowess. And oh. we'll just miss it. Nine out of ten, though. Excellent scoring. Now we go on to the final round. Okay, so off Paul goes. He's looking for nine out of ten here, Jazz, on the clay pigeons. One gone. Oh, oh. He's got to hit everything now. Now, this is tricky because although they go in a straight line, they don't hang about as long as the duck, so it's got to be fairly quick. Oh! Yeah, that was very close. He's being a bit uh, itchy on the trigger finger. Oh. Oh, he's, got... he's not following them through. Oh. He's got seven out of eight, these two, to get the golden joystick. He's got one! He's got no... Oh! oh! Paul, you were so close. Jazz Rignall is in tears in the commentary box. That's how close you were. Talk me through what happened in the end. Just got triggered, Afi. Yeah, you did a bit. But have you enjoyed yourself anyway? Yeah. Well, you've, we've all certainly enjoyed it here, so that's something to take back to Wirral. Thank you very much, Paul. Okay, yeah. Thanks. So, unfortunately, it is with a heavy heart that we go into the next stage of the programme. But if after the tenseness of that, you perhaps think that life has lost a little bit of its edge, wait till you see the three new games we're reviewing this week. This week, whoops Vicar, it's time to send Granny out of the room as we look at adult games. First up on the Amiga, Mrs Whitehouse's favourite, the Luke Strip Poker 2. I can't see the pleasure in seeing these rather unattractive people when you could buy a magazine of better looking people with no clothes on, but it's a good fun card game and it's good fun to get out at a party. There are also data discs available with male characters on for all those unfortunate girlfriends and wives so that they don't feel too left out. When the novelty's worn off about stripping, it's actually a very good game. Next up, also on the Amiga, inscrutable oriental puzzles with an attempt at titillation in Geisha. T 
teasingly titled, but um, actually a little bit tame at the end of the day. You're going to be fidgeting whether you've bought it as an adventure game or as a piece of adult entertainment. It's just something you deliver. It's a fun game, a bit long and drawn out really, to be commercially viable. <laughs> And lastly, fueling the fantasies of balding pot-bellied PC owners everywhere, Leisure Suit Larry 5. It's really good fun. It delivers in, in an adult way on a humour front, and it's fairly fruity as well. The graphics are excellent. This is a really fun and a challenging game. <laughs> Now for this week's feature, which sees the second part of our look at the new Whopper consoles. This week we cast our eyes over the one everybody's talking about, the Super Nintendo. Once again, Paul Lakin, the editor of GameZone magazine, is here to whet our appetite. There can be few consoles that have been more eagerly awaited than the Super NES, which is being released in the spring. People have probably already seen it as a Super Famicom, which has been available on import. It's a really exciting machine with a colour palette of about thir over 32,000 colours and um, four layer screens which make for some impressive 3D graphics, 3D appearing graphics. It's possibly the best machine around at the moment. The quality of the games for it is outstanding. I'd say it really lives up to its hype. If you'd like more information about anything in the programme, you can call the Games Master Club. We'll give you the number at the end of the show. Now, about this time every week, I don't have fancy a celebrity challenge. Well, this week is no different. To hear all about it, let's call up Games Master. Nice to see you again. I am flattered that you've come back to try your hand at another of my little challenges. I thought a spot of football would be rather apt for my second little jaunt, and I've chosen a game by the name of Emlyn Hughes International Soccer. A resilient and hard-tackling England side will pit their skills against the flair of Brazil over two 90-second halves. May the best team win. And in this fast and furious footballing encounter, young Sonny Neya from Ealing will be taking on the man who named the game, former Liverpool and England captain, Emlyn Hughes. Now, Emlyn, welcome. Now, this is your game. You must be the pre-match favourite. Well, I, I think I'm favourite in the bookies' eyes, but I hope that the referee abandons it with all this fog about, <laughs> because that's my only chance, I think. <laughs> now, Sonny, how do you think you'll handle yourself against Crazy Horse himself? Well, I think I play a lot of computer games at home, so I think I could do it. OK, well, I'm going to... My money's on you for this game, Sonny, Watch I think. Now. If you'd like to take your seats in the Games Master right, Stadium, we'll get ready for kick-off. And keeping me warm and snug in the Games Master dugout is our very own expert, Dave Perry. Dave, welcome. Hi. Now, Dave, what general tips can you give to our players for this particular game? Well, with most football simulations, the most important thing is mastering the tackling early on. And um, not being afraid to take the goalie on, I think, is important in this game. OK, are our two competitors ready? OK. Then, Emlyn, kick off. And the players come onto the pitch. It's Emlyn in the white shirts playing England, playing from left to right. Sonny in the famous green and gold shirts of Brazil, playing right to left. Dave, how do you see this match going? Well, the Brazilian side are usually a little bit faster than England early on, but England have the stamina and usually better tacklers. So um, I, I must admit, I, I do fancy Sonny for this game. <laughs> OK, the fellow got the ball, he's weaving, weaving down the pitch. Sonny is, Sonny is, he's bucking and weaving, he's making mincemeat out of the English midfield there. Coming down the edge of the ball, he's dribbling around there. Been Emily though, I think, at the I back. And it looks like it's Brian Rodgers is up there. Right? And Brazil have got it again. Oh, and a nasty power there by Emlyn Hughes. Ah. Emlyn's playing a little bit hard here, I think. Yes. <laughs> Snuffing out the brilliant skill early on. Oh, it's a lovely ball up in the box. Isn't it? Brazil have got it. And they take it up there. We're going to see a shot. He's taking the it goes. Oh! Oh, 
good factor of this game so far. Watch it, mate. Sonny's Watch willingness it. to shoot him. Emlyn's inability to stop him in defence. <laughs> <laughs> now, Emlyn's got his work cut. Oh, what's my man doing? I keep half. losing and it. Brazil have got it again from the kickoff. Oh, here they come again towards England box here. And it'd be nice if England could tackle as well at some point. We could see a third goal, but he's down. He said the Brazil have got it. <laughs> so how can Emlyn get back in this game? How can he try some long passes? What does he have to do in the joystick? I would say, yeah, for the oh, long right, shot, he wants, to, he wants to get, get a bit of pace on his player, pull back on the joystick with a fire button in and let go and really hammer some at that Brazilian goal. Get some rebounds in there. OK, but here's Brazil needing a bus again. It could be a fourth. Oh! oh but no, Brazil have got it again. It's still dangerous. It's not over yet. But England get it out of the box, but Brazil take it again. Oh! Keeper's challenging him to actually have a go, isn't he? Brazil have got it. It's a very credit penalty area there. And no, England have got it. They've given away again. Very <laughs> and England get the ball away here. It's and congested it in that goal, man. And isn't it's it? half time. Oh, they've all got And the half time score is England nil, Brazil three. So what a breathtaking game we have here. Young Sonny from Ealing has already stuck three goals past Emlyn Hughes and it's only half time. Will Emlyn claw his way back? Join us after the break. Master Stadium. Young Sonny Nea from Ealing has stuck three goals against Emlyn Hughes, to which Emlyn hasn't replied. Will this be a one-way traffic of a second match? Let's kick off the second half to see. So the team's going for the second half. The English players looking a bit spirited now, Dave. Perhaps they've got the bit between their teeth. But I should think that Emlyn's given them a good talking to at half time. Um, they, they certainly can't do much worse than they did no, in the first can't. Game. And Brazil have started again as they mean to go on. And he takes it up into the box. There's Could this be another Brazilian goal? Which would surely put the game beyond that. But no! Oh my god, he's gone the wrong way! No. It could be, oh my oh. word! <laughs> Footballing suicide there from the England centre. I, I, I think England were told to score in the second half, and nobody told them they changed ends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they picked it up. Oh no, oh. Brazil is taking it back. Oh, what a lovely sliding back, but it's not quite good enough. Oh my oh. word! Is it, it going to be a penalty? Yes! Oh. <laughs> and Brazil have got the ball. Oh, they're going ganged up on him then. They were determined for that one. I don't think we've seen one pass in the game from England. We haven't seen a pass from either team, I don't think. It's been a purely dribbly game. Oh, Brazil have got the ball. It could be another oh, one. What a oh, save to the goalie. No, oh, no, 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 no. Yes, it could be. This is no, probably no. the worst England defeat since 1973, by my reckoning, Dave. I think so, yeah. Now, Cooper's just got <laughs> one last goal. Oh, and there's a little bit of a man running in the middle of the field there from the England side. A little frag in the middle. They're going to go the ball. It's going to work again. Oh, no, no, no. it'll be so nice to see them get a goal. familiar side again. But they're not going to get it. The seconds have taken away. Are England going to get it? Oh, no. Great save again. And there's only seconds Come left on, in this Emlyn. match. This is the final charge of the game from England, and it's going to end in nothing. The ref's going. looking at his watch, I think. Yeah. And he's there in his armour. There it is. The final whistle goes. Brazil 5, England 0. No. England has been trounced by Sonny. You were looking. You were dead shot. jammy there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Evelyn, commiserations, Evelyn. Ah. Some nice charging runs up the middle, but you couldn't get the ball in the back I of the net. Couldn't get the ball in the net. They were too good for me, Brazil, and especially this little lad. He had a brilliant match. You did, Sonny. 5 0. Bit of a trouncing against Evelyn. How do you think you won? Just attacking him. <laughs> and attacking him, you certainly <laughs> did. Five triumphant times. Well, listen, Sonny, by being Emlyn, you have won the most famous prize in television our special Golden Games Master joystick. <laughs> Now, while 
I take a little breather after that hectic encounter, let's find out the latest tips and cheats in Games Master's Consultation Zone. Kingdom. Very sadly, we are coming to the end of the series, and you're one of the very last three who can take advantage of my advice. So, how can I help you? I can't get through the Lost Woods in Zelda. Can you help me? Ah, Zelda, one of my favorites, so full of surprises. There's only one way through the Lost Woods, young man. Up. left again. You can then proceed to the next part of the game. Thank you very much. You'll find it quite easy. Right, next up, please. Hello, Games Master. Hello, and what can I do for you? On Shadow Dancer, I keep getting killed trying to get to the top of the Statue of Liberty. Can you help me? Oh, dear young man. You know, I hate to say this, but you really do seem to be rather lacking in ability. All you need to do is to keep to the right-hand side of the platform as it rises, for then you can dispose of the ninjas as they appear to the left. By doing that, you'll reach the top of the Statue of Liberty in no time. It really is quite that simple, you know. Oh, cheers. Well, I wish you all success. And now we come to our very last visitor to my kingdom. Hello, Games Master. I've been playing Rag Gravity for absolutely ages and I still can't find the crystal bombs. Could you tell me where they are, please? Oh dear, oh dear, let me think. The crystal bombs in Rag Gravity. Bear with you one second. Oh yes, if I recall correctly, the crystal bombs are in Varnia. Yes, Varnia, that's right. After you drop down the shaft, you will need to use the energy disc to fly under the hole in the roof. If you then jump up and go to your right, you will find the secret room which contains the bombs. Does that make sense to you? Yes, thanks a lot. Well, I'm glad it does, but I fear that brings our little get-together to a close. I do hope that some of the advice I've imparted will serve to enhance your game-playing performances. Now for our final challenge, let's see what Games Master's got planned. I fear this may be the last of our little get-togethers, a melancholy moment indeed. No matter. I have a highly amusing, if rather macabre, little number with which to finish off the series. It's called D-Cap Attack. You will need to guide a headless personage by the name of Chuck D. Head through the first two levels of the game in less than two minutes. A stern time challenge. Whatever you do, don't lose your head. Now, we may be featuring the first two levels of this game, but two minutes is a very tricky time limit indeed. Attempting to sprint his way through this game challenge is John Beveridge from Hastings. Now, John, this is a very tough game. How long have you been practicing? I've had the game about a week, so I've had quite a bit of practice. Right, that's right. I hear you're a bit of an expert, but it's a very tough time challenge. Two minutes. Are you confident? Yeah, I am. Okay, that's good to see. If you'd like to sit down, get your joystick in your hand, and we'll get ready to play. Okay. And helping to keep me moist and fluffy in the pulpit tonight is Neil West from Sega Power. Welcome back, Neil. Hi, Dominic. Now, any tips you can give John for the game? Well, you didn't underestimate it when you said that two minutes was very, very tough. There's lots of things to pick up, but the one thing he's got to make sure he gets is the head. He can then pick that up and chuck it at his enemies. Right. Very indeed. Okay, then, John, are you ready? Then your two minutes begin now. <laughs> Off he goes. Yeah, he did the right thing. He went straight to the statue, smashed it open, and got himself his extra head. And now he can throw that at his enemies, and that's why it's called Chuck D. Head. That's why. Sega joke number one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, he's zooming through these levels incredibly fast. He's it's jumping over yeah. a lot of them. Is that quicker? Yeah, that's the best idea. Um, he can get all sorts of good things by killing baddies. Oh, my word. I mustn't cut you in there. What a lovely little spike he jumped on there. That was excellent. Yeah, it's a bouncing pole. If he grabs hold of that, he can catapult himself all over the level. And those little boxes there. If he jumps on top of those, it gets catapulted. Okay, just over 30 seconds gone. A little over a quarter of the way through the challenge. He's doing very well, Neil. He's doing very well indeed. As you said, he's not taking time out to beat the baddies. He's jumping over them. That's a lot quicker. He's got the right idea there. And he can go very fast indeed. And here he comes towards he the end of the first level. 
way through the challenge. No problem. And that's 50 seconds gone, but it's going to take a bit of time to change over, leaving that himself is. just that's over right. a minute, Neil. Can he do it? Yes, he can. He hasn't taken a hit. He's still got his head and everything's going great. As long as he keeps this up, he should just do it. Okay, now these arrow things are giving him a further jumping power. They are, but he's got his head and he can chuck it back and it comes back like a yo-yo. Very useful indeed. Now level two is a lot trickier than level one. And the only thing he's got to worry about really is losing his head. If he loses that, he'll be in big trouble, but he's doing okay, okay so Okay, 45 seconds left here. It's going to be very, very close, but I think he's going to do it, Neil. He took a bit of time there. He missed the jump, so he had to go back and do it again. That must have wasted him a good five seconds. Right, well, he's got just over 30 seconds left here. I see he jumped on a skull there to get up. afford to take any hits whatsoever and it's also going to find it a lot tougher killing the baddies and he's punching through those blocks these arrows are shooting him up there 20 seconds left here he's shooting up those walls again that bouncing through the blocks is very clever that was a very neat shortcut he's going to make oh, it, he's just it yes! yes with 12 seconds left john has completed the challenge we have a winner John, you heard through those levels there, but you came a little bit unstuck in the second one. You took a hit, you lost your head. Were you worried at all? No, not really. I was, you know, I was near the end, so. Right, and you did it with 12 seconds to spare. It was incredibly good. And as a result of this, being one of our games playing champions, you win the prize that cannot be priced, our Golden Games Master Joystick. <laughs> Basically, that brings Games Master to a final close. So for the last time, I slip on my smoking jacket and take a melancholy mug of rosehip. And I can only wish that one day we'll resume our blossoming relationship. Good night. Now for those details about the Games Master Club. We have free t-shirts, new competitions and posters with information about the show. The number to call, and please dial carefully, is 0891 600 123. Calls are charged at 36 pence a minute off peak and 48 pence at all other times. If you're under 18, please ask permission before making the call.